Howdy, everybody. So uh, yesterday I did a video on can the traditional Latin mass be abrogated? And I, at the end of the video, I kind of listed out the questions that I think are the, the core questions we need to ask. I listed them out as a, a syllogism or a, a kind of a philosophical, a logical argument to prove a point, <laughs> to, to, to come to a certain conclusion, right? And that syllogism was, if, if the Novus Ordo is the Roman Rite, then the traditional Latin Mass can be abrogated. All right. If the Novus Ordo is the Roman Rite, then the traditional Latin Mass can be abrogated. Okay, so some of the premises of that syllogism, some, some of the, the underlying assumptions that I made were that um, the Roman Rite itself cannot be abrogated. And uh, there is, a, a it seems actually, quite a, a much larger strain of Catholic theologians than I initially thought who, who would, would say that the Roman Rite itself could be abrogated. All right. So that, that is actually a, a, a premise that is disputed, okay, <laughs> which, which throws the whole syllogism that I constructed in the last video, it kind of, uh, if it proves true, um, if that premise proves true, then therefore the whole, whole syllogism is false. All right. If the Roman Rite itself could be abrogated, okay, then it doesn't really matter if the uh, if the Novus Ordo is the Roman Rite or not. Um, it, it doesn't matter to the question: Can the traditional Latin Mass be abrogated? All right. So, and and this is a this is a point where I think a lot of traditionalists <laughs> will get angry. They'll get they'll get angry because uh, this kind of this does seem to cut a lot of the argument. So in ba basically, I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to be intellectually honest as best as I can as I myself go through this whole process of, of research and study. And hopefully some of you or all of you are finding this valuable. Okay, so shifting shifting the question now from uh, can, or, or fr from the, from uh, is the Novus Ordo the Roman Rite, shifting it to can the Roman rite itself be abrogated? Or, or maybe a better way to, to put this is, it's shifting from can the traditional Latin mass be abrogated to can the Roman rite itself be abrogated? And then the reason that we're discussing, discussing this point is because um, we want to figure out if the traditional Latin mass can be abrogated or not. All right, that, that's, that is a big, a big question in sac Catholic uh, circles right now. It's a big discussion, a big uh, debate, maybe you could you could call it. So, and, and you know what, uh, just for the sake of housekeeping, <laughs> I'm going to take a different way home than the interstate because I'm hoping that will lessen the amount of background noise and therefore you'll be able to, to hear me better. As I was listening to the episode that I posted yesterday, it just was pretty clear that a lot of my words were were kind of muffled. So in an, in an effort to create a little better quality of audio, I'm going to hop off the interstate here. I'm just going to be on it for a second, and then I'm going to take a, a different way home. It'll probably only take me about five minutes longer, but it will provide, I think, a, a better listening experience. So, and again, the, the reason I want to... I want to do this follow-up video is because I, I, I really, I do not want to lead people astray. Um, I don't want to couch this whole discussion in a way that, that ignores, you know, unintentionally ignores a necessary facet of it. Okay. And that is the very good question of, of can the Roman rite or the Byzantine rite or the Antiochian rite, the Alexandrian rite, whatever it might be, can they be abrogated, no matter how ancient they are? Even if it could be proved that they could go back all the way to the apostles, okay? even, if, even if it could be proved that they could go all the way back to the apostles, I think uh, most people would say that those rites would at least be a human apostolic tradition. And, and like I explained last time, uh, there are the theologians generally distinguish between four different types of tradition. They are the dominical tradition, meaning coming really straight from God. 
uh, and then and then you have the divine apostolic tradition, which are uh, traditions that were that the Holy Spirit inspired the apostles to bring into the the baby church, <laughs> I guess you could say. And then you have your human apostolic tradition, which are you know traditions from the apostles, um, but they are not inspired by by God. Okay, and then you have ecclesiastical traditions, which are those traditions that are post-apostolic. They they come about after the apostles themselves. All right. And only the first two of those types of tradition are are divinely inspired. And because of that, most people would say that those first two types of tradition, the dominical and the, the divine apostolic, are not able to be changed. Okay. Those two types of tradition could not be changed. Now, the, the latter two types of tradition could be changed. Uh, human apostolic and, and ecclesiastical traditions could be changed. Now, now, I think it would be uh, it would have to be a very grave reason to change a human apostolic tradition. All right, I, I think I think that that that's probably pretty pretty clear that it would have to be a very grave reason to change a human apostolic tradition. Um, and there are many theologians, or maybe you would even say all theologians, would classify the main rites of the church, the Roman rite, the Alexandrian rite, the Antiochian rite, the Byzantine rite, um, as stemming from from that human apostolic tradition. Well, I guess I should clarify, it would only, it would not be the Byzantine rite. The Byzantine rite, you know, came about much later, was not an initial center uh, of Christianity. The initial centers were Rome, Antioch and Alexandria. Okay. And so those three rites, or at least the rites that, that trace their lineage to those three places, would hold some sort of pride of place. Okay. I think that's pretty fair to say. Now, with all this, I, I'm I'm really I'm I'm trying not to I'm trying not to speak more than I know. And for that reason, I, I may leave gaps, and that's intentional. I'm, I'm, I'm really trying not to lead people astray with what I'm doing here. What I'm trying to do is document my journey through this question. All right, like I've said many times, I am not a scholar. I'm just a Catholic who really loves his faith, and and wants to understand it better and help others understand it better. And I also want to be a catalyst for good discussions. So. So yeah, with, with this question of does the, or, or can the Roman rite or any of those original, let's just call them apostolic rites um, because they trace back to the apostolic, the original apostolic sees. Okay, let's call them that. Um, the, the original three apostolic rites. Now, whether it can historically be verified that the three rites of Rome Antioch and Alexandria actually trace their roots back to the apostles themselves, you know, in any substantial form. Um, that's a separate question. And I would venture to guess that it would be a very hard case to make that we can historically verify that, that claim, that those, those, that we have, you know, let's say a record to prove that those three liturgies go back to the apostles themselves. Okay, that does, I would be very impressed by historians if they could, uh, if they could prove that, or, or at least give demonstrable evidence of it. All right, so I guess, you know, really what I'm trying to do here is, is, um, is rephrase the question, or, or, or pose another question, right, that is, uh, sorry, I have to get over, I'm taking a new way home, and I was in a Right turn only land. Anyway, so I, I'm trying to to pose this question because I, I I'm trying to get people to feel the tension that I feel about this question. That there there are many many arguments to take into account. There are are many facets of this whole issue that need to be taken into account and researched, and it's. It's a very complex issue. This is not an easy issue. Okay. I do think that people like uh, Peter Kwasniewski and Gregory de Pippo and many others have done a good job of, of um, laying out their own arguments. 
Okay. And also giving evidences for the premises that they bring up. Uh, but there are people, uh, many people <laughs> on the opposing side. And I don't even know anymore if you could just simplify this to two different sides. I don't think, I don't, I really don't think you can. I think it's a, a multifaceted issue with, you really can't simplify it into camps, guys. It's not, it's not as simple as the traditionalists versus the conservatives or even the traditionalists versus the conservatives versus the progressives. I mean, I, I don't know if any traditionalists or conservatives consider progressive arguments about the liturgy. They're, as far as I know, they're, they're kind of whacked out. Maybe that's unfair for me to say, but um, I guess I, I, should, I should note that I have not looked into at all uh, anybody who would, would be considered a, a, a progressive on the liturgy. But all that to say, I think there are, are many different opinions on this issue, and I think there are good arguments on all sides, or at least on, on many of the sides. What it really comes down to is evaluating the premises that all of these people bring up. Okay. And, 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 you know, something like saying, well, because we can't ver historically verify that the Roman right or the... the the Alexandrian rite or the Antiochian rite go back to uh, the apostles themselves because we can't historically verify that. That therefore means that they don't. Right? Well, well, no, that's not true. They very well could trace their way uh, back to the apostles, but we are just not able to historically verify it. All right? Our historical verification doesn't determine what's true. It's only the truth determines what's true, not our uh, discovery of it. All right, that's that's really the one of the big tensions in philosophy between kind of a, a modern philosophical outlook and a, a pre-modern one is the question of, of objective truth, right? And I'm not trying to get off on a tangent here, but and, and I, I would note also that me phrasing the argument like that is a is an oversimplification of what some conservatives, let's say, would would argue for. They wouldn't phrase it like, oh, because we cannot historically verify where this uh, right originates, then therefore it must not originate from the apostles. No, they wouldn't say that. They're just, they're giving that as an extra amount of evidence, okay, for their position that, that the Roman right itself could be abrogated. All right. So, yeah, I, I don't know if I have a whole ton more that I want to say on this, because uh, because as I as I indicated earlier, I, d I don't want to overstep my bound. My bound. I'm really wanting people just to to see that there is this other question out there that needs to be that needs to be addressed. I know many of the the, the traditionalists like Dr. Peter Kwasniewski and Gregory de Pippo. I, I believe they would give a very robust argument to to that. This question, you know, could the Roman right itself be abrogated? Um, I think they would give very robust arguments towards that question. And I, I'll be interested to see exactly what arguments they, they do end up giving. I just realized in my car that I don't have my visor anymore uh, on the driver's side. It, uh, at some point, it, it broke off. I'm sure many of you have had that, a similar experience. So please um, forgive me for the sun... Uh, shining right into the camera right now or forgive the sun maybe so maybe it's maybe it's helpful to to take another step back and just look at this entire question you know what what is the what is the overarching question question here it is uh can the traditional latin mass be abrogated? that is the overarching question and i think as i've demonstrated there are a multitude of arguments to answer either positively or negatively to that question Okay, there is the, the traditionalist argument, and I, I'm going to frame, I guess I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to simplify it a little bit. I'm going to frame it in, there's two arguments. There's a traditional argument, traditional syllogism, and then there's a, a, um, a conservative syllogism. Okay, this is, again, this is an oversimplification for the purpose of um, helping people understand. So the traditionalist syllogism is, if the Novus Ordo is, is the Roman rite, then the traditional Latin mass can be abrogated. And we, of course, could kind of flip that syllogism and we could phrase it a different way um, and say, if the Novus Ordo is, is not 
the Roman Rite, then the traditional Latin Mass cannot be abrogated. Okay, so that, that's kind of one of these syllogisms here. Now then the conservative comes along and he says, okay, well, the underlying premise here is that the Roman Rite itself cannot be abrogated, right? That's kind of the underlying premise of this, this syllogism. So show me the evidence that, that the Roman Rite itself cannot be abrogated. Sh show me that evidence. Show me that evidence. Okay. And, you know, that's kind of how I would phrase the question or how I'm phrasing the state of the question in this sort of augmented way <laughs> from, from my last video. Okay. This is a an augmented version of my last video to, to expand its scope of the state of the question because I've, I've talked with some people since, uh, since yesterday, and, uh, and they, they brought these things to my attention, um, and I think that that is very valuable. All right, there we go. I think that's pretty much it, and uh, God bless y'all. See you in the next time.